Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube. I am now at the end of week six of my post-show rebound phase. So I'm gonna give you guys a recap and today we're gonna get into some back and hamstring training too. So first thing in the morning, I weighed in and I'm right around 243. It was 243.6 this morning. And uh, which, is, which is the heaviest I've been so far this whole six weeks. This last week I went to Vegas for the USA Championships. I had some clients out there which that really, um, from, from a off-season perspective and trying to be very, very consistent, it makes you very inconsistent. So we had just some really long days out there. And for me, when I travel, it's uh, usually that higher, that increased activity level. And then also with limited sleep, I'll start dropping weight out there. So I did a really good job this time of not dropping weight and making sure I kept my calories in. So I had some days, like I had a client competing in a, a different time zone that was earlier. And then with, with flight and travel and our um, just sleep schedule getting off that way, it just like one, one night I just had like four hours of sleep. And then we stayed up really late because the show was on that day. So what helped me was for one, just I, kept, I took my scale with me. So I was tracking to see if I was dropping weight or gaining weight or anything like that. So I can make adjustments throughout the day accordingly. And then also, of course, like, you know, I have clients competing and uh, Renee had her photo shoot. So we wanted to go out and have some, some fun food in Vegas. So we, you know, we had like some all you can eat sushi place. We had pizza twice, um, a burger place. And so that, I feel like for, for me at least, like the activity level that I had out there, it really didn't have a big impact on my look and we're still able to have fun and enjoy some food. So so coming back, looking at my my pictures and taking them, everything, I think my conditioning is still holding really, really well. I see a little bit softer, but um, still have like some deep ab lines, quads are fully separated. I can still see like some vague glute lines that are there, which is, which is really good can, for being six weeks and especially after um having my my all these cheat meals this past weekend <clears throat> so coming back today just getting back to my normal plan and probably towards the end of the week this will be the, like the last week that i'm really pushing things harder and going to wind it back down so i'm going to be making some some adjustments to the diet uh it's just really based off results. So if I start seeing my look really, really fade, that's when I'm gonna start changing things. And what I've had in mind is just trying to bring calories down closer to a maintenance level to where I'm not gaining weight, or it's gonna be very, very slow. So I think I could still make, make progress. Um, and then also reducing my carbohydrates and replacing them with fats so I can keep up that insulin sensitivity. And I, I will definitely still keep in my, my zero carb days and my, uh, and which, which are the really high fat days. <clears throat> and that might be more frequent with those. I've been doing those every about every um, 10 days. So I might increase it, do it every every off day that I have. So it'd be every every fourth day, I'd be doing uh, my zero carb, high fat day. But again, I'm just going off how I feel and, feel and how I respond in my pictures. So, But we'll head to the gym in a little bit. All right, what's up guys? We're getting to the gym, the Muscle Factory. I'm gonna be doing one of my third, my third back day for the week out of my eight day split. So this day is back and hamstrings. So I'll be hitting two back moves. I'll, I'll count my RDLs as a back move. Um, and then the rest of the workouts is gonna be hamstring focused. So uh, I'm trying to really bring up back and my, my lats more specifically. And so starting with like a, a lat pull down and then going into a paused RDL has been awesome. And I have to give credit to Jordan Peters. He gave me the idea to do it. It's been great, um, a great combo together. So we'll start with a, uh, a pull down using the prime handles. Something I've been, it's a little different, but they can rotate between supination all the way to neutral and to a pronated grip. Um, but for this workout, I'm gonna use a, a neutral grip. Puts the biceps in a real strong position. I can really just focus on driving the elbows down.
That's the first set. It's in reps, so go on and drop the weight, drop about 20% um, of the weight. And I'll try to, try to stay within that 10 to 12 or go even a little higher. People, a lot of people ask me about these prime handles. They feel really good, they're very ergonomic. You don't need really need straps with them. Um, but I, I prefer them over the bars. It feels less, uh, the forearms feel less bound up with them. Last set, lower the weight, another 20%. We're gonna fail you again. All right, so pullovers are done. Now I'm gonna to go to a lying leg curl. It's one of my first hamstring moves. I'm gonna do a rest pause set in the first one. So go to failure, uh, rest 20 seconds, go to failure again, rest 20 seconds, go to failure again, keeping the weight the same the whole time. Then I'll have uh, a second set of a lighter weight, just repping out as many as I can. So just two like true work sets here. I'll do two warm ups though. Uh, that way, so going from lap pull down to line leg curl, the whole backside's going to be warmed up for when, when I go into my RDL. So there's is a thought process behind it. I've been tinkering around with doing the pull downs and going straight to stiff legs of the remaining deadlifts versus doing leg curls first. Um, I definitely feel more lat when I do just go straight from the lat pull down into RDLs versus doing leg curls first, but from a safety standpoint and just a mobility standpoint, I think the leg curls as a secondary exercise is a little bit more productive and, and uh, has a greater overall benefit for, for hands and back. You get a good balance as well. Set next. Big thing for my knees to keep your hush, hips pushed down in the pad. You see guys watch them online leg curl, their hips twist up. They use their lower back to initiate the move. Uh, definitely want to keep the hips fixed in a position and just, just uh, flex at the knee. Um, for the toes, just keep them loosely pointed. The gastroc crosses the knee joint and it can assist in the move. So if you keep the, the foot a little looser and toe, toes pointed, um, like plantar flex, like you're doing a calf raise in it, you take the gas truck out of it and you keep more tension just on the hamstrings alone. You use a lot less weight too, so you're also less liable to get your back involved and get, especially post-show, getting some big lower back pump that prevents you from going on to do your RDLs. So that was my rest pause set. 
One thing I want to say about rest pause sets, if you're like a beginner in training, or even intermediate for that matter, hold off from doing rest pause sets. Most of the time I would, I would say that. Uh, unless you can fully make the most out of a straight set and generate as much intensity as possible. And I think that will continue to develop over the years, even being able to generate more intensity within your straight set. So it doesn't make sense if you don't know how to take a, a set to truly reach failure, to then take break, breaks and try to further uh, go beyond failure. Uh, so I would definitely master just a straight set before trying to implement a technique like rest pause or drop sets or force reps or anything else for that matter. But going to my last set, I dropped the weight about 30% and just hit, hit something that's really high reps. So I'm trying to just get a lot of blood in them now. Alright, so my hamstrings are lit up pretty good. I'm gonna go on to a dumbbell RDL, but pausing it at the stretch position. Everything's already pretty warm. I'm gonna do like warm, one warm up set. I'm gonna go into two working sets. I'm trying to hit between, aim, stay between like 10 to 15 reps in those work sets. <laughs> So this one, if I wasn't pausing and trying to be intentional about squeezing my lats, you go way heavier. But doing this way caused me to be a lot stricter. So giving a good like one, two second pause at the bottom, really keeping tension in your hamstrings and pulling up with them. And also the whole time, I'm trying to almost pull my hands back towards the body and really contract my lats the whole time. And that's why this, this room has been effective as a second, third exercise after I've done a pull down. But two sets, that's all it takes over here. Volume doesn't be high because we're really taking it near failure. So I'm not, I'll complete my last rep, but knowing like my, if I went for another one, I would be able to get it. I swear, I still do. I still do cardio. I swear, it doesn't matter. When you gain like 30 pounds, you're still gonna be puffing and puffing on a big set. So you got past the Romanian deadlifts. Getting more specific, just in a hamstring work now. I'm gonna do a uh, glute ham raise, body weight for two sets. Just rep out of failure. I think this is one of the best hamstring exercises because you can use part of hip extension and also knee flexion. You can take the hamstring through both me mechanisms of action and uh, get, get a really good contraction at the top of the movement. So I could use like a seated leg curl as another hamstring move to get another like knee flexion movement, but I'd rather pick like a line hand curl than like a blue ham raise over, over a seat like curl. Um, I've been going on my diet, I haven't made any change in my diet in the last uh, two weeks now. So I'm still sitting around 300 grams of protein, 600 grams of carbs, and 55 grams of fat on my training days. It's about 4,100 calories. Um, and I have every other off day, I just do a high fat, nearly zero carb day. Protein's around 250, fats are 200 grams. 
And uh, like I said, it's every other off day. So my other off day, I'll just run my same training day, diet plan, which uh, I'll just do even 60 grams of carbs, 15 grams of fat with each meal for the day, six meals. This is like built-in progressive overload in the off-season. I keep getting heavier, so these don't get any easier. I'm still hitting around like 12 reps on my first set. Which is good, because I'm getting like 30 pounds up from stage weight. But if you see, like, I'm letting my hips bend and then extending them to help get some momentum going. But also, you're using the hamstrings in that motion of hip extension and then finishing off with knee flexion. One more set. Finish the glute ham raise, gonna go on to wide stance leg press. And I'll do these just higher reps, just uh, trying to build more metabolic stress for the hamstrings. It's a good compound lift. I'm also gonna have some quad involvement. And uh, it's great for adductors. So a lot of people say, how do you get your adductors so big? Well, any wide stance movements really hit your adductors well. I don't even do isolation work on my adductors. Um, so I'll do, uh, do a warm up set just to feel it out, more of a feeder set. And they go into two work sets of 30 reps, coming all the way down and just pushing up about half to three quarter of the way, trying to keep constant tension on, on the hamstrings. So this is my teaching for the day on progressive overload. To reiterate what I try to say every time, is for my last, last time I did this workout, I did two sets. One at 600 pounds. The second one I did 690. I hit 30 reps on both sets. So this time I'm gonna start with 690. On the second set I'll hit 690 again. So just within that, still two sets, still 30 reps, but the weight increased. So that's an increase in training volume. So that's already increasing the total volume for the whole workout, which is progressive overload. So I'm already doing more work within this session, which should cause a greater stimulus, and cause greater training adaptations for next time. So I don't need to add more sets or more reps onto this session. Just by increasing work weight is an increase in volume itself. Easy, not that easy, it was good. All right, let's go. But I got more in me for next time. So last exercise for ham and glutes. I'll just do a glute kickback single leg. 
Yes, I do a glute kickback single leg. Um, because I need more developed glutes. So I think at least for my left glute, I have a hard time activating it. And also why I don't see as much separation in it. So if I can do something single leg, really focus on getting good contraction. And I'll keep these reps higher, bring a lot of blood into them. Just one all out set. It's gonna rip off. Squeeze it so hard. So one, one major thing difference is that I'm actually training apps in the off season, which I'll be honest and say that I haven't done in the past. It's, it's hurt me so. I use, still use the glute ham raise and just flip around in it. And it's been great for getting good full range of motion in my abs and full trunk flexion. And I've just been logging my reps of what I can do with body weight and trying to go up. And they'll fatigue pretty quick in the concentric phase, so I'll, the second and third set, I'll try to like get myself up and then do, just do a couple negatives, really controlled and slow on the way down. Just do three sets, then move on to like either planks or like a rope crunch after that. Last time I was doing 17 reps, got 21 this time. So abs are improving strength endurance wise. Oh, shit. Oh. I'm done with that shit. God damn it. So I just did two one minute ab planks, and that's it. That's all I'm doing for abs. The idea on the ab planks is while you're in that position, trying to pull your hips underneath you and contract the abs the whole time. Just like if you're doing like an overhead abdominal pose. Um, yeah, just, just right now, I'm just doing, just, just doing two sets. That's been enough. So that uh, wraps up my back, hamstring, and ab day. Leave any comments below, ask me questions, leave in the descriptions. If you're uh, interested in coaching, go to my website, j3sportsrd.com. I also have my written out uh, updates on my blog on there, so y'all can follow along as I progress through the off season. I will talk to you guys next time.